Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for episode one of Kakegurui Compulsive Gambler. Okay, I did my live reaction earlier today, now I'm doing the review. You could tell from my live reaction I really enjoyed the episode, and you're going to get that exact same feeling here in this review. Okay, this episode starts off by introducing us to the school, Hyakao Hyakao Pre- I'm not even- I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. Okay, the school. Okay, they introduce us to the school, alright, they introduce the concept of ga- We already know what gambling is, but they introduce the concept of gambling in the context of the school, and they tell us that if you lose too much money, you essentially become a slave, okay? And this is what happens to the main guy in the series, Suzui. He loses to Mary Saltome, and he ends up becoming her servant. Her literal dog, because she calls him Fido, sits on him and has him fetch snacks and drinks for her. Okay. Now I seem I kind of I said this in my live reaction, but I kind of remember that concept from somewhere. I can't really remember what. I kind they kind of did it with Stephanie Dola in No Game No Life, but it was obviously more lighthearted than this. I probably saw it in Kaiji as well. Kaiji, great anime, weird character designs, but still a great anime. Um, but uh, they introduced this idea that at this school, a ton of gambling exists. We don't actually know how um, how ingrained gambling is in the school. We don't know if this is like some secret gambling that takes place amongst the students, or if the faculty are involved as well, if the faculty know what's going on, if the faculty allow this. We don't know that yet. I'm assuming we will find that out later, because I find it hard to believe that there would be no episode that addresses the whole faculty situation. Okay, so at some point we'll see some teachers and we'll find out what their take on this is and if it's approved by them. But for now, all we have are the students. And this is when we get a transfer student who is the main character of the show, Yumiko. Okay, she comes in, she changes everything for Suzui, for Saotome, for everyone. All right, and in the in the opening theme, we can see uh, a lot of symbolism and a lot of uh, foreshadowing for what type of character she is and the relationships she ends up building with all the like. I think there were six or seven rival characters that showed up in the anime. At least like three blondes, plus some girl in like a in like traditional Japanese clothing, um, a girl who looked like an idol. A girl with an eye patch. There were there were quite a few people in the opening that come off. A student council president was one of the blondes, right? So that there were quite a few number of people who come off as rivals, um, and the way that Yumeko is portrayed in the opening, it makes it look like she's able to essentially defeat every single one of them with complete ease. She's literally feasting on all the rival characters because they just can't compete with her. Okay. And she's having fun doing. She's running around with her fork and knife like she's Toriko. Okay, like she, like she she was she was in. All right, she she was literally on top of her. Like she she's in love with herself. That you see that in the ending theme as well. That she really loves herself. Okay, um, and apparently other people like her too because she gets a lot of followers. One of the girls, I think the girl who's in episode two who you can see in the episode preview she's literally like kissing her feet and praising her it's, it's, it's crazy so the character relationships in the show it, there are definitely some yuri undertones um maybe we will see you, never mind i was gonna make a yuri on ice joke and then i just decided not to because it would have been stupid i'm just gonna move on okay i'm just gonna move on um yumiko ends up becoming the target of Saltome. Because um, Suzui is apparently the the uh, class rep, and he actually looked like he was going to enjoy showing showing her around. And Mary does not like her servant enjoying himself in any way and feeling anything other than pain and suffering. Okay, that's all this girl wanted him to feel. So she got upset when he was actually getting to do something he actually liked doing. All right. Uh, Suzui ended up taking her around the campus, and he tried to prepare her for the gown because he knew it was only a matter of time. He knew. Right? And she was kind of playing the innocent new girl here, 
she pretended not to be an expert at it, but the more he talked, the more excited she got. She couldn't hold it back. She just couldn't hold it back. She ended up letting it slip that she's just, she just loves gambling. She's compulsive. Okay, she is the compulsive gambler, and she loves it. She loves the stuff. Okay, and it didn't take long for her to actually get a chance to gamble because as soon as school ended, Mary challenged her to a card game version of rock, paper, scissors. Okay, and the way this game works is kind of interesting. I mentioned it in my live reaction that uh, No Game No Life has my favorite game of rock, paper, scissors in all of anime. And uh, Kakegurui found a way to make it interesting. Um, the way it works is the students all draw rock, paper, or scissors on a card. They, they have three cards total, one of each, rock, paper, scissors. And they all walk up to this box and they put one of their cards in right and then Mary and Yumiko have to draw three cards from that box and choose which cards to play and from there on it's you know rock beats scissors scissors beats paper etc right but it's important to focus on this fact that the students put one card specifically in the box and they decide which card they're gonna put in there okay so technically you could have a situation where all the students choose to put rock into the box and Mary and Yumiko have three rocks in their hand, and that's all they can do. So they just draw for those in, for the entire round, okay? Um, and this plays into the strategy because if you can figure, if you can somehow deduce which cards are the most common in the box, you can figure out, okay, my opponent most likely has these cards which means they are most likely to play these cards and that means if I want to win I play this card okay so if you can figure out which cards are the most common in the box you can figure out what cards your opponent has what cards are gonna play and when you do that you can win easily okay I mean, obviously none of that is easy easy but we'll get into that later because Mary was definitely plotting here All right. But the problem with her plotting, the problem with Mary plotting, was that Yumiko had reverted back to playing the innocent new girl, okay? So Mary was looking at her, and she was underestimating her, alright? We know, we know that she's a compulsive gambler, we know she's OP, we know that she's not someone you want to mess with, okay? But Mary didn't know that, so I guess, I guess you could say Mary did not know what he was f***ing with. Well, she... But, you get the point, okay? Mary just didn't know who she was screwing around with, alright? And the best part about it was that Yumiko got to see Mary treating Suzumi like trash, and that's when she decided, nah, 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 I'm gonna destroy this piece of garbage. Nah, I'm gonna destroy this girl, okay? And, and one of the, actually, let me, take a, let me take some time out to actually point this out, because there are some great shots in this anime, okay? Mappa has done a phenomenal job with this animation and I'll put some I'll put some like footage and some clips on the screen here okay but Mappa did a phenomenal job with this animation you know they got they had a lot of good crazed sadistic looks from from uh, from Mary okay the char the character designs and the way these facial expressions were crafted the way they were animated it was just perfect it just it just fit perfectly for these scenes okay and the and the these eye shots okay there are so many great shots of of Mary's eyes and Yumiko's eyes and just there's so many great scenes in this one episode alone that show that MAPPA is going all out with this animation, okay? They did a phenomenal job. And from the episode 2 preview, it looks like they did a phenomenal job in next week's episode as well, okay? So I'm looking forward to seeing more of this great animation, alright? Now, I mentioned some of these crazed and sadistic expressions from Mary. Most of those came from her taunting Suzui and Yumiko, alright? Especially during the match. Right, because she and Yumiko, they were trading wins back and forth. Um, all the big money hands went to Mary, and eventually Yumiko lost all of her chips. All right, but then she brought out ten million big ones and challenged Mary again. And 
at first Murray wasn't going to go through with it, but then Yumiko started poking out her pride a little bit in that, you know, sadistic crazy, you know, she eventually decided to go and do it again. And she actually revealed here that 21 out of the 30 students who were submitting cards in the box, the rock, paper, scissors cards, 21 out of 30 of them are on her side. And, the, and she, she is essentially choosing the cards that go inside the box, so she's crafting an advantage for herself. Okay, she thought she was slick, which first of all, and I said this in my live reaction too, if you're, if you're controlling the game, why are you so worried about playing another round, you know? If she was that confident, then she shouldn't have been worried in the first place, okay? But the problem with that, and, and the reason why she was right to be afraid at first is because Yumiko figured out her strategy, okay? And she called her out on it, too, all right? Yumiko figured out everything. She deduced every single aspect of Mary's plan and then topped that off by beating her, okay? Beat her in front of everybody, okay? The odds were against her. The odds were against her, she, but she had luck on her side, she got those scissors, and she beat Mary down, okay? Ten million, okay? I think it was a total of 8.8 .8 million yen in debt that Mary ended up being in because of this game, okay? And Mary didn't have the money. She didn't have the money, and she had to humiliate herself. A girl like that has a lot of pride, okay? She had to humiliate herself. By admitting to all of those students that she didn't have the money to pay this girl what she was owed, okay? Because she screwed up. She had the advantage. She still couldn't win when it counted, okay? And to top it all off, Yumiko had mercy on her and forgave the debt, which humiliates her even more, okay? That, at first, I wasn't sure if that was a good punishment, but then I got out, decided, you know what, that, that actually eats away at her pride even more, so that might actually be more painful than actually having her having her pay. At least if she if she, she could, like, do something to get the money and, and kind of save face and say, you know, yeah, you might have gotten me, you might have gotten lucky on one hand, but I, I paid you back and I could beat you again if I really wanted to. You know, she'd be able to save face in some way, right? But this way, there's no saving face. He, you lost, you got humiliated because you couldn't pay her back, and then she had to have mercy on you and forgive her. So now you and forgive you. So now you don't even have the option to pay her. Like it's it, that destroys her pride. So that actually is probably the worst punishment. Okay. Now after this, Yumiko kind of just walks out. Like she's perf she's back to normal. And Suzuki chases after her and asks how exactly she figured everything out. And she explain you know she explains how she deduced it. She figured you know it it's obvious you were doing something. She she had some type of control. It was just a matter of how she was telling people, how she was signaling people what what cards to actually put in the box and after going through you know the different types of signals that were possible sound visual she decides it was a visual signal but she knew it wasn't her so she had to figure out who it was that these kids were looking at to get the signal and she noticed that all the gazes were in her direction and at first she thought I guess it's pretty normal for them to be looking at me since I'm playing in this game but the, she thought like no nah, they're looking at me a little bit too much this is weird wait, maybe they're not looking at me. Maybe they're looking at the person behind me. And that's how she figured out that it was Suzui who was giving the signals, and he was he was standing behind her. Right? And that's how she figured out it was Suzui giving the signals. And she also had a mirror. She, she also had a mirror, so she was actually looking and seeing the signals, seeing what type of cards were dealt out by on her hand her hand and Mary's hand, and she was able to deduce which signal meant rock, paper, scissors, and she was she was able to figure out all that, okay? She was able to figure out all that, so this Yemeko girl is pretty legit, okay? She's, she, she, she's, might be a compulsive gambler, but she's not Tsunade, okay? She's not, she, she doesn't lose every time she gambles. She gambles a lot, but she's good at it, and she wins, okay? She's the opposite of Tsunade, okay? So Yemeko, laid out how she figured all this stuff out and except for the scissors okay that part was luck actually getting scissors in her hand for that for that last game for that 10 million yen game that that was complete luck all right but even so still not a skill on her part for deducing all, all the entire plan all right and after he hears this Suzui apologizes to her for his role and everything, and he actually says he's going to drop out of the academy because he just can't take it anymore, and he doesn't feel like being, 
Mary Slave, right? But Yumiko actually goes back to being the innocent new girl for a brief second. And, you know, the, at first I thought she was kind of just playing this character, playing this innocent new girl, because she didn't want people to know how good she was. But after seeing this, a part of me thinks, like, no, that's... This, that's genuinely who she is. She gets excited and she gets turned on at the prospect of gambling, but that innocent new girl actually is who she genuinely is because her reaction when she went back to being that innocent new girl happened as Suzy was apologizing to her and it caught her off guard, right? So that's why I think that's genuinely who she is and she's just a really weird cool but weird person right and that's actually she's not playing character that's just who she is all right but anyway um she sees him apologizing and she and telling her that he's going to drop out and she decides you know what i'm going to give him the money he needs to repay mary and i'm going to do it as thanks for him showing me around the school and you know and introducing me into this all this gambling stuff because I love gambling so much and I had a lot of fun today and I'm gonna and I'm thanking you for allowing me to have all that fun and making it difficult because no one likes to win easily. I like I like a little bit of difficulty in, in winning in my gambling, right? So she decides to give him money the money he needs to uh, repay Mary and stop being her servant. And uh, yeah that, that's about how the episode ends. It had a another great eye shot all right, another great shot of, of Yumiko's eyes. But uh, that's how the episode ends. And uh, like I said before, the next episode preview shows the girl kissing her feet in the opening. It shows her as the rival for the next episode. So we, we can definitely tell how this ends. Yumiko's going to beat her so badly that the girl falls in love with her pretty much. <laughs> that's pretty much how it's going to end. And I'm going to look forward to every second of it, too, okay? Because this episode was great, all right? I'm giving this episode a 9 out of 10. I thought it was a great first episode. And let's just hope that they can keep up this quality for episode 2, and for the entire series, actually, okay? So, yeah, that is that is it, you guys. I am giving this episode a 9 out of 10. And that is that, you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at BlacklistOTA. And I will see you guys next time.